Hey guys, you'll have to forgive the kind of poor lighting here, uh, but I told some of you guys we would do an update on the rat snake. Um, I think she's just going into a shed cycle, so she's very herky-jerky today and very impatient and just wants to get back into her cage. So we're going to do this kind of short. Um, what I'll do is talk about her for a minute. We'll put her in her cage and then I'll let you guys see her in her cage um, in a little bit better lighting. But she's growing very, very fast. Uh, she's actually living in the cage behind me here that you're looking at. Uh, so doors open there. This is her new cage, black box cage. It's a three by 18 by 18. Uh, it's got a radiant heat panel plus the lighting in there. Uh, obviously you can see her. Uh, she was formerly in, in um, what do you call it? An exoterra that was 24 by 18 by 12, I think. Uh, so this gives her a lot more square footage. Um, she uses the bamboo a lot. She will climb up there quite a bit, especially at night. She'll come out and she'll sit with her head up on this end here. Um, you know, especially I usually turn the light on when I come home from work for a little while and let her do her thing. I'll end up breaking that door by accident. Um, she's actually calmed down quite a bit now that she's been out for a minute. Um, just a great rat snake, uh, great feeder. Uh, she's been, she's been pretty good for me. I'm waiting for her to bite me on this video because she's never bitten me before. But uh, the way, the, the mood she's in right now, I would not be surprised if she did. Um, you know, and she's not being horrible by any means, but she'd just much rather be in her cage right now and not be disturbed. But I promised you guys I would do this, and so out she is. Um, and she eats anything. She'll eat birds. She'll eat, uh, you know, rats, mice, whatever. Um, one of the things she really likes to do uh, is be my cleanup when I have the baby snakes uh, and I'm feeding them hopper mice and stuff that are live. I'll, uh, you know, I'll, I'll offer them to her once they're fresh killed uh, just because she's kind of a, a snake with a high metabolism that can eat a couple of those and it's not a big deal and she's always happy to take multiples. Uh, but typically I give her like rat pups or really small quail. Uh, she's not quite up to the size where I would feed her chicks yet. But I am sure when she gets there, she will be happy to oblige. I'm trying to keep her in the shot as best I can. Let's see her there. Gonna bite me right on the elbow, right on video. Be like, hey, check this out. Um, but yeah, she's not even really defensive in her cage. She's just very much, if she's doing her thing, she doesn't want to be bothered. And so she'll put up a stink and... I don't even want to say quite run, but she will, uh, you know, make it clear that she'd rather just be left onto her own. But she's very, very nosy. She's always interested in everything that I'm doing, uh, especially here. She's in the living room. Uh, you can see my incubator is right next to her, although that's off right now. And my TV is just on the other side. Uh, so I'm in here, you know, doing paperwork at night or, you know, relaxing for a few minutes before I go to bed. Uh, you know, I eat dinner in here a lot, things like that. Um, if I do happen to be watching TV, I'm usually in here. So she, uh, she gets a fair amount of time to watch what I'm doing. And she's always, always very interested in everything that goes on. And so if I'm in here, you will see right away, she's out and about checking out, you know, she is not out and about as much in this cage as she was in the EXO. Um, now she's only been in here for probably less than two weeks at this point. Uh, I don't remember the exact date, maybe around two weeks, maybe a little bit less. So she hasn't been in here very long. She's still probably settling in to some extent, but she does come out just not as much. The XO, she was out, you know, probably 70% of the time that I was in the room. Now she's out probably like 45 to 50% of the time. Um, she'll, she doesn't burrow as much in here as she did in there, but she does use the hide more in here than she did. So it's, it's weird how, you know, she has the same hide from both cages. Um, she had bamboo in the other cage, just different bamboo. This is, this is different because I had to cut it to size for this cage. Um, but same idea. So she has basically the same setup. She was on chip in both, both enclosures. So the only real difference is the size, space. And then uh, I also have her heated a little bit more in this cage than I did in that one. Just because with this cage, she can get a little bit more of a gradient. So I have her hot spot a little bit higher than I did before in the Exoterra, where it's harder for her to get away from that hot spot. Um, so she has a temperature range in there that's, you know, depending on the time of day and uh, spot in the cage, goes anywhere from like the mid 60s 
up into the low 80s. Um, and then if she really basks up on top of her hide, she can hit like mid 80s, 86 on a hot day. Um, but I don't really feel there's any need for her to go any much higher than that. And she can always climb and get closer to the heat source if she wants to, which she's never tried to do. Uh, so I don't, I don't think she has any interest in higher temperatures than what she has. But pretty great rat snake, and she's not even being really terrible anymore. Um, you know, before I started filming, she was racing all over the place, but now she's, she's pretty well relaxed. Um, but like I said, I think she's just going into a shed cycle. I can't really get a clear shot of her eye there, I don't think. But cool rat snake produced by my friend Stacy. She's doing well. We'll uh, put her in her cage here and we'll give you a little time to kind of observe her. So let's get you positioned here where you can hopefully see the whole thing. She's probably just going to go into her hide to be quite honest, but you never know. Maybe, maybe she'll give you a little something to, to look at. Yeah, she's headed towards her hide. Looks like she's going to burrow actually. Oh, there she goes. Up and around. You always got to watch their tails with these cages when you're closing the door. Just make sure you don't pinch them, obviously. And always make sure you're locking every little lock that you have so you don't want any escapes. But I think it's a nice size enclosure for her. I think it'll last her pretty well for probably another year or so. You can see her over there. Um, I don't think it'll last her much more than a year and maybe not even a year. Uh, eventually being a, a, you know, black rat snake and knowing her parents were both good sized rat snakes, I have a feeling that she's going to, going to finish in a four by two cage probably. Um, we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm hoping, I'm hoping to get nearly a year out of this cage for her, but time will tell. She's grown pretty fast and I don't, I don't feed her a tremendous amount. I know I talked about her being on the cleanup crew a little bit and all that, but I really, I really don't feed her feed her all that much, especially because I'm so geared towards short tails and stuff. I have to remind myself that she has a higher metabolism and I, I do feed her more often than them, but I probably don't feed her as often as most colubrid people would feed her. Um, but yeah, she's just, she's wonderful and she's probably super mad right now that I took her out, but she'll get over it. So make sure you hit the comments. Let me know what you think of the new setup for her here. Um, I kept her same water dish, you know, it's not the most fancy thing, but the green color seems to kind of go with it and look decent. Uh, eventually, I'd like to add some more features in there for her. Um, you know, maybe I'd get her like a shelf or something, or maybe uh, just get her some more climbing stuff, because she does, she does enjoy climbing quite a bit. But I do want to leave some open space down here for her too, for her to stretch out and move around, uh, you know, and be active. You know, she's an active hunter, so... It's nice to see her come out at night and start to bomb around. She's coming back this way, but I bet if I open the door, she's going to be like, nope, I don't want anything to do with you. You touched me, you horrible, horrible person. Let's see, who knows, maybe. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. She's like, do you have food? Do you not have food? Can you guys see her? Hopefully you can see her. Yeah, you can see her inching back there from her hide. She was like, ooh, he's not watching. But nope. Um, but she's a fun snake. Different change of pace, you know, from the short tails and stuff, but not quite uh, the Australian stuff. You know, the Liasa stuff's a little bit different, um, obviously, in strength and movement and habits and stuff, but... Closer to them as far as, you know, handling goes and, and how, how much she moves around, but cool animal. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing her new new setup. Um, and then uh, you guys saw in the last video, although she's she's hiding for sure, the, uh, the Fuscus girl's in there somewhere. She's probably under the chip on the hot side or she's under the chip in the hide. Uh, I caught her out on top of her hide uh, early this morning at about 5.30. So she is coming out after dark and exploring a little bit, but she's she's a much more shy and reserved animal. Uh, so she's pretty much been hiding most of the time in the new cage, but she's transitioning from a tub. So I would expect that for a little while. As long as she eats and doesn't appear overly stressed, then we'll let her keep adjusting to that. So we'll see you guys soon. Thank you.